If you want to run Android 15 on a Raspberry Pi 5, it's very, very simple. You can use Mteria Android and in the following steps, I'm going to show you how to get this Android up and running quickly and efficiently. There is a small change, namely that now we can download Mteria directly using the Raspberry Pi installer. However, downloading the Raspberry Pi imager by hand is a bit hairy because the installation is difficult. So instead, it's much more comfortable to just use this here. And you see on some versions of Ubuntu, you have to use Snap. And now we've got the Snap installed. We go RPI minus Imager. And we wait for it to start up. And now we see it here. We can select the device. We are using a Raspberry Pi 5. Here we can select our operating system. So we can go here into freemium and paid for. We go for Android by Mteria. And you see here, it allows us Android 14 or Android 15. And of course we select Android 15. And then here we have to be very, very careful to select the right storage device. And then we click here next. It will require these parameters. We give it to that. And now it starts to download and to write. And here in the background, we can also watch the process in the command line. And yes, this takes some time and I'm not going to show you the whole writing and downloading process because it just takes a bit of time, even if you use a USB 3 card reader. And as you see here, when you get this message, you know that the transfer has been completed and then you can basically click continue and move the card over to the main process computer. Next up is our eternal favorite, the bring up process computer, memory card inside, connected to HDMI zero, keyboard and mouse. And yes, I always prefer to use a gigabit ethernet connection because the reason is that debugging programs, for example, using the Android Studio and the ADB is very latency sensitive. And if you have this connection here, it just is much faster than if you use the Wi-Fi transmitter of the process computer. And then of course we need the power supply. We plug it in. We see our LED over there lights up. And then the next step takes a bit of time. It's a bit difficult to film this from here, but I am using my HP studio monitor. And you see that the lamp is already green. The detection lamp, you see it's already green. Even so, there still is nothing visible on the screen. And this initial starter process can take a bit of time, a minute or two or even longer. And then after a bit of time where it will show that the system is getting ready, you find yourself here in this startup assistant. And here in the first step, you click next. And then it will ask you for the location. I'm going to take English UK. And now it will try to detect the keyboard, but we are going to skip this. Here it asks for the time zone. That's also okay. And regarding the Wi-Fi, this is important. You see, it says if you don't have a working Ethernet connection, then you need to connect to a Wi-Fi because the actual activation of Mteria 
requires a connection to the Enteria server. But because we've got our Ethernet connection, we click here next and now it asks for the activation and this for now we will also skip and then finally this is it. You see no provisioning, nothing. Let's still click the update button. So we are not activated yet, but we'll just ignore it for now. We will click next. We agree to the license conditions and then we click start. And after this beautiful little animation, we already find ourselves at the Enteria start screen. The next important step is activation. If you don't activate your Enteria, it will regularly restart and also you lose access to some advanced capabilities. So we go here to hubemteria.com and we log in. And then we go here into the field devices where we see the devices which we already have. But for now, we are not yet at five devices, so we will just add a new device. And now that we are logged in, we make a swipe here to get into the list of programs. We push here this button. Uh -huh. Doesn't seem to work the way it should. Ah, okay. We go here and here, and then we go into Emteria license. And now we have to log in here with our Emteria login data. And then we click continue. And now we see it generates automatically an activation code. And here we have to activate the license. And when we've got it activated successfully, we restart it like so. Here we see U-Boot again, the bootloader which is used by Emteria. And now we already see the Emteria startup animation slowly but surely show up. And we see again phone is starting. So we are now logging in into the Emteria environment. And what is important here, what was at the bottom here below is now gone. So this is now a fully activated, fully licensed Emteria Android device, which never restarts. And yes, incidentally, you need to keep in mind that the license is connected both to the process computer and to the memory card. So it is a very good idea to dedicate this memory card and to keep it for the future because otherwise you have to get in touch with their customer support to reactivate your licenses. The main reason probably why we are using this system is because we want to use it for development. And as you just saw here, there is an application called Emteria settings, which among other things gives us the Ethernet settings here. And what's very, very important is this option, enable ADB over Ethernet. And only if you switch this on, will the ADB bridge become available. And you see here the IP address. And this IP address you can then use on the workstation to establish a debugging connection. For the actual debugging connection, in theory, you can of course be using the ADB command line tool. But alternatively, 
we can also go here <coughs> and we can try this option. For the actual connection, we must then go here into the platform tools folder. Be careful that Wi-Fi detection or Wi-Fi connection option in Android Studio does not work. And then we go here, we say RDB connect. We give the IP address as you see here and we get the message connected. And then here we see in the device manager BRCM for Broadcom Raspberry Pi 5. And when we see this, we are in theory able to execute our application just as if we were deploying to a phone connected via an USB data link. And with that, I have to thank you. I hope that this presentation was useful for you and hope to see you again on this channel very soon. Thank you.